Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mother Days podcast. I am one of your hosts, Teresa Palmer. And I'm Sarah Wright Olson. Hi, Daisies. Hi. Um, Sarah knows this about me, that I've been obsessed with our guest <laughs> for so long. <sighs> I've been following her on Instagram. And I I think in the early days when Bodhi was really little I was always like oh does there do you all follow like new earth mama she's so amazing um and so I said to Sarah once we got the podcast I was like I cannot wait to interview Emma and this was about you know a year ago when we were talking about the podcast and then this really amazing radical thing happened to her and I was like all right we're putting her on the list she's coming on she's amazing (laughs) And so today we have the beautiful Emma Johnston, who is mum of five and a stepmother. Mm-hmm. Are you a stepmother? Too? Yes, a stepmother yes. to one. Yeah, stepmother Aww. to one. She is the founder of the Reconnected, um, which is beautiful conscious parenting community. It's unbelievable. Um, a yogi. She's a breathwork practitioner, and I would say an inspirer to hundreds of thousands of people who follow you and um they're just a big part of your community and you have um you've been really doing some wonderful things in in your space which is for me it feels really deeply rooted in spirituality and Mm. connection and love and the way that that bleeds into your parenting is so remarkable and I I remember I was a new mummy. I think, well, Bodhi was probably about two. And I first found Emma's page because a friend of mine tagged me in one of your posts of your son, Atlas. And they were like, wow, this little boy looks so much like Bodhi. And I started following you and I was like, oh my gosh, they look so similar. And there was this little like sparkle in Atlas's eyes. And I was like, oh, I recognize that. What a gorgeous little man. And I started um, following your work and I always describe as such a breath of fresh air. Um, You know, you're just in the busyness of life and parenting. And then I'd go onto your page and you'd post something, whether it be a meditation or a recipe, a plant-based recipe, or just like beautiful songs that you had and your kids were dancing to them. And I was like, (laughs) oh, this just feels good. This is one of those pages you go to and I'm like, oh, it makes me stop, breathe, and just feel really good. So thank you so much, Emma, and welcome to the Mother Days. Oh, that was such an epic um, introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no, I've yes, always wanted epic. to meet you too. Yeah, I've always wanted to meet oh. you too because I, whenever I look at our kids, I'm like, wow, they could almost be related. And um, <laughs> I just know that yeah, I know that you were kind of into the same things and I love your podcast mm-hmm. and I love that you talk about birth and I love that, um, you know, you're a business mom as well as being a mom and that you have the courage to share about birth and how important it is. Oh, thank you so much, Emma. Um, So, okay, we're all upset. Everyone who follows you, we're all obsessed with your divine children. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like little <laughs> angels. Um, could you just start by telling us what their names are and how old they are? Yeah. So my children, uh, I have Atlas, he's nine, Solaris, he's seven, Venus, who's five, and I just had twins and they're six months old and they're Phaedra <laughs> and Halo, boy and girl. Oh my gosh. Oh so, my yeah. God. Yeah. And I do... I have a beautiful um, stepson, Phoenix, who's 16. Oh, my oh, gosh. gorgeous. Wow. wow. How similar to my situation because I have a beautiful stepson who's 15. Um, wow. And then, Except that she's one step ahead of you with um, – with the, the twins, twins that you really want to have. Girl, mm-hmm. I've been calling in twins. I'm going to show you right now. You're going to be like, mm, this is a bit creepy. But, okay, so I have my manifest board on my phone. Yeah. Do you recognize those little babies down there? So cute. It was always <laughs> my dream too, you know. It's one of those manifestation things that you think, I would so love to have twins, but I can never create that, you know. Like I, that's kind of just like a lucky lotto win and I, I got yeah. it. <laughs> So I've always been like, I want boy-girl twins. So now Phaedra and Halo are on my manifest boards. Just like I saved some of their pictures (laughs) 
and it's so funny because like years ago I really wanted to have a girl after the boys and so I was following this um another family who lives in Byron Bay this woman called Courtney Ad- Adamo yeah. and she yeah. had boy boy girl girl and I had photos on my wall of her family because I was like oh my gosh how amazing like a couple of boys and she had a couple of girls and then, so yeah. I also have a family and now I've got your twins because that's what I want to call them next it's like <laughs> boy girl twins oh my goodness um so I was in Byron Bay recently which I believe that's where you live yeah uh, in and around that area um yeah and I was doing I was at a friend, my friend Chrissy's house, and we were obviously with people who knew you um, and they were running a yogi session and this, oh, it was a couple and he had this beautiful voice and he was singing and doing sound work and she was leading this yoga and it was deeply Mm. spiritual and beautiful. And I started chatting with them and I was hearing everyone talk about, oh, my gosh, Emma, Emma, she gave birth. And I didn't know who they were talking about. Um, but just a friend of theirs, this Emma, she's given birth. Oh my, she didn't realize that she was going to have twins. She was expecting one baby. Oh and then during the birth, <laughs> two babies came out. And I was like, what a wild story. Oh my gosh, tell me more. So they started talking about you and I didn't realize it was you at the time. And then the next day you posted about the fact that you had the surprise of a lifetime when not one but two babies came out. And I was like, wait, it's that, Emma. It's New Earth Mama, Emma. And it was what I told so many people. I was like, guys, you have no idea. This thing just happened and it's so remarkable. And like, oh, what a miracle. This is incredible. And um, and then, of course, I knew I just wanted you to come on and just talk about that experience, um, what it was like being pregnant. I think you took sort of a more hands-off approach in terms of, you know, all of the appointments yeah. and, and all the stuff that comes oftentimes with pregnancy. So if you just wanted to talk about that journey and um, and feel free to tap into all of your birth experiences and um pregnancies too because I really love the way you do things and and you inspire so many. Yeah all right well it's actually such an interesting story because I wasn't we really didn't think we were going to have more kids we were pretty kind of like okay we're kind of sorted and that's all good and then um, I was like I found out I was pregnant and I had this moment with Ryan where I was like okay, we're okay because we're like, we're settled in our house, business is doing okay, the kids are all good, let's just roll with it, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And then four days after I found out, we had a cataclysmic um, floods and landslides (gasps) and 400 metres of the mountain next to my house fell over and we were trapped up I live in the rainforest area for eight days oh my and gosh I lost all of a sudden I was like we didn't have any communication <gasps> I was like oh I don't know if my business is even here my house is broken because we had um we had heaps of water coming through our house oh. I was like literally everything flipped on its head like I'd only just been saying we're, we're totally sorted it's okay and then it was just like actually (gasps) now you're homeless I don't even know what we're doing like it was just like (gasps) the most ridiculous experience and then I got really really sick after those eight days I got so sick and um I thought I was water poisoned because we were having to (gasps) siphon water out of our tank because we had nothing we didn't have electricity or water or anything so we were just siphoning water out of the tank and I thought oh my god I have water poisoning because I was so violently ill no. And I I went to the hospital because that's it's kind of I, I just don't really love going to hospitals. It's not like my mm. favorite thing to do. And mm-hmm. um, at one point I said, I need to go to the hospital. And Ryan looked at me and he's like, wow, it's serious, isn't it? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And so oh, we went yeah. into the hospital and I said, I know I'm pregnant but I'm really sick. What can you do for me? And they kind of helped me and gave me fluids and stuff, but I didn't get any tests. 
but we had to move into a friend's house, like, because our whole area, oh the whole road and everything was gone. Couldn't get home. That's right. And the whole area, there was like 100,000 people who were homeless. Like, it was like not oh, just me and my family. Yeah. It was like everywhere. It was like the entire area for us, like my mm. whole family, everyone was displaced, all my friends. Oh, like, it was wow. insane. So... Um, it was just kind of lucky that my f- gorgeous friend gave us her place to stay. And oh, wow. I just, we were in so much shock from the experience. It was just so epic that we just kind of went really inwards and we just mm-hmm. stayed at my friend's place and the whole area was just kind of in this real shock. Um, so that was like the early part of my pregnancy. And even though I stopped being super violently ill, I was still really quite sick. And I was like, wow, this pregnancy is like taking to me to my knees, you know, like Mm -hmm. I think I've got like hypermesis or something. But so I just kind of laid low and I just decided within myself, I'd already had three amazing home births. I have been blessed to not have birth trauma. Um, and so I just needed to stay contained within myself. And so I just decided to continue to move through my pregnancy, um, just with myself and with Ryan. And there wasn't like a total conscious decision at the beginning of I'm going to do it alone. Like that wasn't what it was. It was just more Mm. the circumstances around me. Like it was chaos. Like it was like everyone was traumatized. The whole area was madness. The, the last thing I was thinking about was a midwife's appointment. You know, I was just like, yeah. yeah. So I moved through my pregnancy and then around 20 weeks I started to feel better and I started to feel more in my body. And yeah. I kept having this really strong feeling of a girl and I could hear this name Phaedra and I was like, I think it's her. Like I think it's Phaedra and I, I think it's a girl. And everything I was asking for signs, it would keep reaffirming to me there's a girl there named Phaedra. So I was just pretty set. I was like, okay, she's there. Yeah. And um, <laughs> But I also had this intuition she's really secretive. There's something really secretive about this baby because I didn't want to talk to anyone about them. I just, every time I thought about reaching out to a midwife, I just got this, don't do it. Like, and I trust my gut more than anything over my life. Mm -hmm. I've learned to really trust my intuition. And so I didn't. I have a really beautiful friend, Amy Lou, who is uh, an incredible um, free birth doula. So I would, could lean on her to have conversations about what, what I was feeling in my pregnancy and stuff. But I just kept getting this sense of this baby does not want you to talk to anyone about it. Like, <laughs> no, don't talk about the pregnancy to anyone. So I was just really in myself the whole time. And I was actually so driven I was so driven. Uh, My business expanded from that moment when we had the um, landslides where I thought my business had probably like fallen to dust because I had no idea what was going on on the outside. Um, It expanded so much. Like we took on a team of like 15 people over that time. And so my whole pregnancy was just this massive expansion. Um, We did like a massive launch. We had 50 thousand people show up for um, one of our offerings um I was just so busy like I was just like so driven I was so excited by my work I was just like loving it I was just going back to my breath work practice a lot with my business partner we were doing a lot of breath work and I was doing a lot of kundalini yoga and I was just like in it And then I still had this thing of this baby is a secretive baby. And I was like, (laughs) I thought that they were meant to be born in Libran time. But I was like, I bet you anything they'll be a Scorpio. Like I could just sense the like secretiveness of them. (laughs) I did have a few things that I would joke about with my friends. I was like, because with Venus, I also was really big, really quickly, you know, third baby, Mm. you just kind of your whole body just goes, okay, I'm pregnant. And with her, I thought it could totally be twins, you know, like I just feel so big and my hips are so sore and stuff. (laughs) So it was happening again with this one where I was like, 
maybe it's twins. Like, but I would just joke about it because I could only sense this girl Phaedra. Wow. And I would ask my friends who, uh, you know, have had many babies and uh, have been at many births if they'd belly mat me and nobody ever felt two babies. Like it was weird. Like there was no, I never got two kicks. I never got two hiccups or anything, but I would just joke. It may be twins because I was like so big so early on. Wow. Um, and then at one point, my partner had said to some um, girls up the road who own a cafe, oh, maybe it's twins. And they had said that to me and I came home and I was like, stop telling everyone it's twins. I can't handle, you know, like people think it's going to be twins and blah, 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 blah. And I like totally went off at him, right? Oh. And then when I went into labour, um, it was a How really far along different were you? labour. I was 43 weeks, heading into <gasps> 44 weeks when I went into labor. Wow. What? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was meant to have them in labor and season and then it just kept going. But I had this intuition too. And I, whenever anyone would ask me, when, are the, when is the baby due? I'd say between September and November, some, somewhere in there. <laughs> and people couldn't wow. handle that answer because they were just like, what are you <laughs> sure. talking about? They're like, what does that mean? <laughs> but, yeah, what does that mean? Um, <laughs> But my every time I would go into my practice and stuff, I just knew that I was just meant to do this however it was meant to come. Like I just mm-hmm. knew to keep walking with my intuition and just continue to, um, you know, listen to the yes and the yes and the yes, just keep going with the resonance. Mm-hmm. And um, Ryan and I had a few discussions about, you know, what would it look like if we did it? together and I I wanted to understand where he was at you know like how do you feel about that and and where Mm. are you sitting with that and he's had a real reclamation over birth because with his son it was a hospital birth and there was a trauma there and he was Mm. quite afraid with our first child when I said I'm having a home birth because I'd never met anyone who had a home birth I when I fell pregnant with Atlas that was just like something dropped and I was just like, why would I go to a hospital and have a baby? Like that's just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Like I'm doing it at home. And then I had, once I had that, once I had that idea, I, I started to meet people who started to kind of give me, you know, information about what a home birth would look like. Um, and he really reclaimed something in that birth where he really was like, oh, that's what birth is. Okay. And every birth for him has just been this real reclamation of, you know, what it is, what birth is and his role in it, you know, Mm -hmm. um, how he could show up for the birth space. So by the time we got to this pregnancy, he was just like, whatever you want to do, I follow you. If you want to do it on your own, you do it on your own. Let's just do it. You know, I can do it. I, I, I will be okay. And so we just didn't talk about it that much about what our choice was going to be. We were just so busy. It was just like, it just is what it is. I don't know. I'm just moving towards um, that time. Mm-hmm. And then um, in mm. the labor, when the labor started, it was felt really different to my other births. Um, and one of the things was with my other births, I had a midwife. I had two midwives actually, but one who was there for the predominant of the labor. And I realized in this birth, in the moment of labor, I was like, wow, I've fully made a decision to do this on my own. And that was a big awareness that dropped in in that moment. And I was like, "Um, it's me and me right now. And Mm -hmm. I realized like midwives are so incredible because you know, really good midwives are so incredible because you give them a part of the choices or, you know, you just give them some responsibility in that moment and you kind of let go. But in a free birth, it's like, oh, no, it's you and you. Like you make the decisions, you call the shots, you, you know, whereas in my other births, my midwife would say things like, you're so close. You're, you're almost there. Whereas like in this labor, I was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, where am I? Like, what part <laughs> yes. of the labor am I up yeah. for? Like, you know, and I was just like mush. I was just like goo. And is it just the two of you? Just, the, you had just me, daughter? Ryan, and the kids. 
No, no one. Just me, Ryan, and the kids. And the dog, actually. Oh, my <laughs> god! He was holding space. I have, like, a 70-kilo um, Irish wolfhound. He's ginormous. Wow. And, yeah, so um, it was just us, and it was fine. I set up the birth pool in the space, um, and I went into labor early in the morning, and – the whole day was just kind of me in the birth pool, Ryan like coming in and checking on me, but mostly just sorting the kids out, making sure they were eating, playing, you know, doing whatever. And they would come in and it was so funny because they set up around the birth pool with like a couch and like a, they were drinking and like just hanging out with me, like as if they were just like <laughs> watching a show. It was pretty, pretty awesome. With but it was snacks. a real, yeah, real <laughs> snacks and like, you know. All the things. Oh, um, but within the experience, it was just like, oh, wow, like, you know, um, it's fully me. Like I'm I'm in this and I have to kind of just go with it. And I said to Ryan a couple of times, this feels really bizarre. Like I don't know what is happening. It was the first time I'd had back labour because I didn't have that with my oh, other kids. So rough. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's so rough and it's mm-hmm. so epic and – I know with birth that the more you lean into it and the deeper you breathe, you can move towards. And so I just continued to do that, but it was really unlike anything I've really experienced was to truly just lean into the absolute trust of whatever the hell was going on because it was Mm -hmm. so different to my other labors. And I was so lucky because there's a Terence McKenna quote that came to me in this labor and it was throw yourself into the abyss and discover that it's a feather bed. And Mm -hmm. in this experience of labor, I knew that that quote was exactly what I needed because I just continued to throw myself into the abyss with all of the feelings and the sensations that were coming up. And at one point I said, I think this baby's stuck. I don't know what is like, what is going on here? Like, what's this feeling, this thing? And I I continued to go into it. And you know, when you get into that trance state in in labor, yes, I had this vision of me walking over a light spectrum with two kids. I had one on one hand and one on the other. But you know, when you're just in it, like I didn't, Mm -hmm. I wasn't making rational sense of these visions that I was seeing. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this baby shoots into the water. And Ryan <gasps> said, Phaedra shot into the water and made like a ripple. Like she rippled the, oh. the, the birth water. Oh, my gosh. And, and he just grabs her up. And we're like, oh, my God, it is Phaedra. It's the girl. It's like, you know, it was fully oh. who I imagined. It was her. And we're holding her. And the whole family's there and we're all like looking and it was like, oh, that was amazing because it was just so sudden. It was just like, boom. Like (laughs) There was no kind of sign that she was coming. That's insane. This is is after you thought she was stuck. This is after this moment where you're like, okay, she's stuck. I'm having this vision. I was like, there's something there. And then she just like shot out. Okay. okay, She just shot out. (laughs) This is the best thing ever. I'm like, okay, keep (laughs) going. (laughs) <laughs> and I was holding her and then um, and Ryan's like got the thing out. And one of the things I had said to Ryan was you have to get the birth time because I'm so into like astrology and um, yes. human design. I was like, just get the birth time, you know, like just I want to yeah. know what the birth time is. And so he got the birth time and he like wrote it down and he's like standing there and he he has the camera and he's like taking a photo and then he puts the camera down. And I just looked at my belly and I was like, there's another one in there. Like I just could see my belly had collapsed around the other one and I could see like a spine outline or something. Oh my and the gosh. moment I said that, his legs shot out. <gasps> like the moment I said it, his legs came out. And uh, Ryan and I laugh about this because we don't know what happened in this moment, we don't know where we, like, I don't know who held Phaedra <laughs> or where Phaedra <gasps> went because it was so wild that uh, someone had had the baby. I don't know who it was. And One of the kids. Ryan, <laughs> oh, so 
I, I honestly have no idea. And then the legs came out and then I just said to Ryan, don't t- touch them. Like I just had this intuition, don't touch the baby. And he was like, okay, okay, okay. Because I'd never experienced breech birth before. So yeah. my, my gut was just like, don't touch the baby. And he, everyone was just kind of suspended for a moment. And then the next contraction, his head came out and he was <sighs> a bit a bit blue and a bit like not there. But my primal instinct was grab him, suck his mouth, flip him over and just rub him. And the moment yeah. I did that, he came in. He was. Oh, he was my there. God. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. God. It is. Yeah, it's wild. But it ended up just being like the most incredible experience Aww. I've ever had in my life because <laughs> I, I got to really experience that when you trust the resonance of your intuition, you will always be protected. And, um, you know, I've, I've learned that over my life and it's a big part of my work. And yeah, so I knew that my instinct was totally correct. And when I reflect on the reason, well, the funny thing is, is Phaedra is so dynamic. She is so, she's not secretive at all. This girl is like, bang, bang. Like she's just like wants to be out there. It was Halo (laughs) that was the secretive one. He didn't want to be known. Like he was like the secret baby and he's actually really sensitive and like super like slow and just like seriously the most divine thing ever. But I was like, how funny is it that my intuition was showing me Phaedra, but, oh, she's secretive. And it's like, oh, no, that was actually Halo who was the secretive one. Oh, And what an amazing, um, I don't know if you feel done now having children, but, (laughs) like, what a beautiful experience to have after everything you went through in the pregnancy. And it's just like how empowering that you lent yeah. into like the song of your heart. This is how I feel. Yeah. You followed it and like what a remarkable outcome. And these yeah. babies, guys, these babies, you just <laughs> have to so go cute. on. <laughs> you just have to go on to that page. Like they seem like they've been around for millions of lifetimes. There's such knowing yeah. in their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and I really trust them. I trust that they wanted that experience too because the – the the harsh reality and it was a massive grief that came up for me after I had them because obviously I wasn't expecting twins and so I haven't really looked mm-hmm. into twin births or twin anything and um mm-hmm. after I had them and and so many people reaching out to me and so many conversations um it's so rare for twins to have the sovereignty that they were gifted by their birth. Um, Mm. It's really heartbreaking where our society is around twin birth. It's like the moment you say that you're going to have twins, um, birth is completely untrusted. There's a lot of um, hoops that you have to jump through just in order to get a natural birth. Yeah. So I just think it's so funny that they wanted to stay secret in order for me to get to this part because I think if I knew that I was having twins, I would have been up against a lot more mental Mm -hmm. kind of preparation for that Mm -hmm. experience, whereas I was just more throwing myself into the abyss to discover that it's a feather bed. Like it was just the quote of my whole pregnancy. I so. love it so much. How brilliant. And how have the kids, your older three, adjusted? They have been so incredible. And I think it's truly a part of that they were there for the entire experience. Mm. And they are so divine with them and they're so loving. Atlas is so funny. He said it was a, a bit after the birth and I said, what did you do when Halo came out? And he said, I just needed to go get a glass of water and sit down for a moment. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> he was processing. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is, I can't believe I'm like trying to picture what you would have done with the other baby. I must have been <laughs> holding her, but we, we honestly like don't football remember. Hold, like football hold or something. And yeah. the funniest part is like my request about the birth time went out the window with Halo because we don't really know how when long that born. whole scenario went on. Yeah. And the, <laughs> oh the camera, when you said he put the camera down, the camera wasn't on anymore. No, no. the camera wasn't on anymore. Okay. So oh, Halo didn't even want that. It was just yeah, so I was gonna say. Wonderful. And it's just so fitting with exactly what you're feeling about him and everything yeah. is that he like um, all of all of that is like such a mystery, you know, with yes. him. Yes. Is so it the same? Incredible. Would you say that it's like very similar in um, where you live as it is to like America in terms of twin birth? Like how they sort of try to schedule you to come in early. Um, they come and- in early. So they don't really let ch- uh, twins go to term. And um, I think the thing that crushed me the most postpartum was my twins have never been separate and the moment that we had them they have been like they sleep next to each other we I haven't even taken them out of like the house separately like um they've just been so in that bubble together and one of the main things that happens when twins are born is they're put in different incubators Mm. and they're separated and um that just absolutely crushed me because I was experiencing the imperativeness of twins being together like yeah it felt like one unit it like my whole being needed to keep them together for a period of time like I was just like they've got to stay together it felt strange if I walked down the stairs in my house with one and left one upstairs like it just didn't feel right it felt so weird so when I tuned into the reality and I have um, gorgeous twin mum friends who, um, you know, they spoke about their twins first days and it just crushed me because I was like, wow, how, how stressful that must be for mm. not only the twins but the parents. And yeah. I saw a statistic recently that it was like 67%, don't quote me, but of twin parents have postnatal depression and I'm like, I totally understand why. Like it's, yeah. you know, because my it was my innate like sense that they had to be together. Like I yeah. just, you know, it yeah. was my whole body. It was like, yeah. So I just could only oh, imagine amazing. the level of trauma it must be. What is it like for someone who really wants to have twins in my future? What <laughs> is it like <laughs> raising, <laughs> raising Twins. So I, I was thinking about it last night because I have my kids, we co-sleep and, you know, I'm up. I was probably up four times in the night breastfeeding. You know, she wakes me up and I just roll over and, and she breastfeeds. And yeah. I was like, is it just like that all the time at different times, depending on which babies? Are what? So you're just sort of awake more. Yeah, you're, yeah, you are. I, what I am finding with them is that they're quite efficient. So mm. I remember with the other three, they would hang out on the boob for ages, whereas the twins seem to like feed and then they roll off. And so yeah. it's like they're kind of just ready for the other one to come on. Um, so I don't know. It's like, it is crazy. I think the first day I was laughing so much about the (laughs) insanity I was like and what am I meant to do like I was just like this is the most ridiculous thing because you know your milk hasn't come in yet and so your boobs are floppy and the babies are floppy and you've like (laughs) got like you know you're just like trying to like figure out where you hold one and that Orion said that his thing when I had them in the birth pool and we're just like sitting there in like kind of shock. And I will probably share that photo one day. I'm not ready yet, Mm. but there's this photo of me withholding them in the birth pool and the look on my face (laughs) is just like, (laughs) oh my God, what the hell is going on? But um, he was like, He was trying to work out because our plan was if I had the baby in the birth pool, we had in our other room, we have like a day bed and he, his plan was I'll just get her from there to there so that we can take the placenta and all be fine. And then he's looking at me and he's like, 
what is going on? There's like her two babies plus he was just like, oh my God, I don't even know how to get her there. <laughs> I don't even know how we did it. We just kind of got to the the birthing and I was actually going to try for a lotus birth this time and not cut the cord and keep the cord yeah. attached Oh my gosh. For, for a while. No way because it was so cumbersome. It was like two cords and like yeah. it was just like that is just so not happening. Um wow. Yeah, it was just totally wild. But, you know, I I think it's like a lotto-level winning experience having twins. Mm. Like it is so special to see. I just I think it's what I always wanted as a child was to be a twin. I can yeah. just sense the absolute magic that you chose to come onto the earth with someone. It's like, oh, they hold hands and, oh. yeah. It's they're just like, so oh, my gosh. All the videos. I, oh, they're so sweet. So in love. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's so and beautiful. So we, Sarah and I are also big fans of yours in terms of, as a businesswoman, and um, but particularly the kind of work you're putting out into the world, yeah. it's so important. And I'd love you to talk about the reconnected because I know our audience are the perfect people who would be seeking out that kind of information. So if you could talk yeah. a little bit about that, how it started, what it is, how people can get involved. Okay, so the reconnected. I have a incredible business partner, Eleanor Mann, and she is a play therapist and breath worker. And we got to meet each other when I was pregnant with Solaris, my second child. She asked, "Would you like to learn this play therapy method um, that I teach in? Well, that I do in my playroom?" And I was like sure and we went and learned it and it just blew my mind because I just didn't realize that you could hold space for children in this way um I'd never heard of it before I'd never experienced it before and I just felt really blessed to learn it and I think it's what really helped my helped Atlas integrate Solaris into the family really beautifully and they're very, very close. And we both come from this perspective. We're both absolute breathwork nuts. And so we could see that breathwork in itself helps us to really process our own childhood and our own trauma and to really find alignment with our true self, who we really are. And that is exactly what play therapy does. And so there's just such an incredible synergy if you get parents working with the breath and processing their own triggers, traumas, guilt, and then they're holding space for their children with this play therapy that you know, it's just kind of like the golden ticket to being able to really consciously be with your kids and hold space for your kids in a way where you're their safe space, you know, because you've offloaded your triggers and the things that, um, you know, get in the way of you really connecting with your kids. And so we have a lot of programs. Our main one is Reconnected Parenting. And it is what teaches those two methods. And then we run a lot of breathwork programs because that is our medicine. It is what we do and it is how we consciously create. And I truly think that that is why my breath practice is why I could have my free birth and have twins and feel totally safe in it because my breath has led me to just trust myself and trust the process and trust life, trust whatever I need to move towards I can and that I will always be safe within it as long as I turn to my breath as the number one authority in my life, which is just me, myself and whatever is there. So that's what we teach at The Reconnected. And we just launched an app. So everything that um, you do with us is inside our own app. And it's just such a beautiful community. You know, um, we've never once in the last four years that we've had our community running, we've never had to delete a negative comment or police yeah. anyone for doing something negative. And I think that speaks volumes to the work because people are actually just showing up really divinely, authentically and feeling really safe 
and feeling really held. And it's just like, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about, you know? And, um, I think one of the things about Eleanor is, and, and I is that we don't sit on a pedestal of, we are the perfect parent learn from us because we've figured it all out. It's like, (laughs) no, we're actually in the grunt of it. You know, like we get how hard it is, you know, this is, it's real, it's real talk. It's like not, uh, it's not a methodology where we teach you to do a certain thing or how do I do this? It's like, no, access the truth within your own body because that's actually where all the answers are. It's like your truth is you and I can't actually teach you anything other than to guide you to that place. So, yeah. I um, I went on and took your quiz earlier. Um, to find out, you know, my, about my kid. Is my kid a sensitive kid? Or, yeah. And it's funny. I was like thinking, I was like, hmm, which one? Did, of course, it ends up always, <laughs> it's going to be my middle child that I was like trying to to yeah. find out about. And at the end of the quiz, it's like, okay, put in your email. We'll send you the information. And I like open the information. I already knew what it was going to say. It's like, you have a strong-willed child. <laughs> and I was like, yep, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> and yeah. uh But it was amazing to kind of read through that. And I was like, wow, I really want to go deeper here because I think, you know, for me, and I've said this before on here, but um, my, you know, one of my kids is, I mean, all of my kids are such big teachers for me. And one of them is definitely a very big teacher because I feel like she holds up a mirror to me. And Mm -hmm. it's just like, there's so many, so many activations in her and it activates things in me. And I'm like constantly going, you know, to my room or whatever and saying like, okay, what, how can I handle this differently? What can I say this time? And like, am I doing this right? And so (laughs) when I was reading your stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so what I need to understand how to help communicate with her when she sees the, you know, I call it her like red guy, which is like yeah. the, the thing that goes off that makes her so upset or angry or whatever. And she's just like firing and throwing her hat or kicking a rock or like whatever it is in that moment. And I'm like, whoo, how do I meet her right there where she needs to be and like help her and hold space for her. And so yeah. I was so excited to see what you have because I was like, all right, I see this stuff about the sensitive kids. I was like, I need to know about strong willed children and that's exactly yes. what you started telling <laughs> yeah I know yeah it's really it's just so incredible you know we've really moved we call it the new tar- paradigm of parenting because it's like stepping away from needing experts to guide us and our kids it's like no we're the expert of our own ch- children mm-hmm. we know exactly what to do with our own kids if we are guided into finding the answers within ourselves, because our children are our mirrors. They're just teaching us all the time. Children mm-hmm. are the actual gurus. They are way more enlightened, embodied in their own sense. And it's us who are in the way. So it's, yes, yeah, it's so cool. And with strong world kids, I really resonate with that because I am a strong world kid in myself. You know, that's why I chose to birth the way that I want to do. I choose right. to do whatever I want to do and it took years of my own self discovery to reclaim that as a superpower because I went through the schooling system and was always in trouble I went you know I was always in trouble with other neighbors and things for being that kind of gutsy person that Mm strong-willed person And so I needed to reclaim that because I just became a people pleaser because I was like, well, it's unsafe to be me and to want to do my thing and all that. So I had to reclaim that. Whereas we brought in Sarah Mann, Eleanor's sister, because she's the ultimate sensitive and incredibly, incredible naturopath, incredible sensitivity. And to really reclaim the sensitivity as a superpower because it's a superpower and yet those kids are constantly made to like toughen it up and you've got to do this Mm. in order to be able to handle the world and it's like no 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 they need to be 
fully empowered in their sensitivity because we need mm. both. We need the strong-willed people, the pioneers who are going to go out there and, you know, make stuff happen and we need the sensitives to be able to be intuitive and, you know, um, creative. And so, yeah, it's just looking at both and how how they can really be empowered within their within their process. Mm. And do you feel when you look at your kids, you have five different, well, six with your stepson, like such different little people are coming in and you yeah. might have the strong willed and the sensitive. And, and isn't it funny because it's always like people talk about nature versus nurture, but you can raise them the same, you can show up the same, and they just are their own little selves. <laughs> They truly are their own little selves. And I honestly believe that how can you really raise each child the same? Because I think we're in this constant unfurling of ourselves and Mm. life is always so different. And I think their soul, when they, when you become pregnant with them, just gives you a whole new, um, like plethora of content to work with, you know, like they just bring with them their own energy and then it makes you tap into certain parts of your energy and, um, you know, they are so different. Mine are so the same but so different. Like it's really, really interesting to see. Yeah, they're very, um, yeah, they're, ve- they're not, there's not like the hyper strong-willed one and the like hypersensitive one. I think they're all kind of, quite sensitive but I see strong-willed aspects in them at home because I'm their safe space to really yes. offload that yeah. epicness um, but then when we go out with other people they can be the kind of more sensitive golden child kids you know and then at home I get the the grunt of parenting where it's like <laughs> you know, that's where the real stuff happens like <laughs> that, that's the stuff I want to read about on your uh <laughs> And like yeah. those moments when you get in the car after a school day and you're, the teachers are like, wow, what we had such an amazing day. I and know. What a great helper. And then you get in the car and it's like, I'm hungry. Oh, I can't yeah. believe you didn't bring yes. food. You know, and they're like ripping the fabric off your car. I mean, not really. Because but you're like, you know. safe. You know, you're safe to yes. them. And that's they feel that they can fully express that. But it can feel really hard and it can feel really unfair because it's like, how come I get all that part of my child and then everyone else gets the yeah. easy part? But um, I suppose it's just that's where we need to do our own work about how we can hold that and, you know, how we can be with them in those more challenging moments. It's really unlike anything else is it parenting. You know, it can totally bring you to your knees and then, you know, sometimes you feel like you're doing the perfect thing and then other times, you know, it's like, oh, my God. And I think it's so funny when I am kind of put on this pedestal by people because I have the reconnected and they see my kids and it's just like, oh, no, I'm living a very human experience, you know, like some days are really rough. And sometimes Mm -hmm. I think, oh, my God, do I know anything or like, Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, yeah, it's it's incredible, actually. I feel really honoured to have that in life, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How amazing. And you talk about all these things on your podcast as well. How long have you been yes. doing the podcast and is that an experience that you're really enjoying? Yeah, so we haven't been doing it for very long. We actually released our first one after the twins were born and we, we mm-hmm. busted out with my with my full birth story on that. Um, it was just another arm of our work because so many people were asking us. We would love to hear you talk about topics. We would love to hear you talk about things. So it's just something that we drop in and we just mm-hmm. do a few things. And I love just chatting. Eleanor and I, my business partner, we're so the same with our beliefs about the world and parenting and, and our breathwork perspective. And so it's just cool to jam. And then, yeah. Every time you That's talk amazing. about breathwork, I keep taking like a deep breath. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I need to breathe oh more. Um, I know. It's funny how your body tells you things that you need. And, yes. you know, I for the, like the last week, I my body's been telling me, oh, your my back has been bothering me because of like sidelining and nursing and yeah. and 
I um I kept my body kept saying like you need to do yoga you need to move your body like you need to do like take these deep breaths mm-hmm. have that meditation time like whatever it is and I finally did it this morning and I felt so good and it had been like seven days of me avoiding it and like just yeah. putting my head down and keeping going and um I just love hearing you talk about that because I think that so often we like we're like oh if I'm gonna take a moment I'm not gonna take a moment to like breathe or meditate or yeah. you know go inward I'm gonna take a moment to like exercise or like do this or get something done or like whatever it is but you don't realize how healing that is to like take the that time yeah. to do the work right yeah well um your breath carries the signature of your entire life experience so your first breath is in a signature within your breathing mechanism and it means that you may not take deeper breaths or you know you may not be connected to your breath all your trauma everything that has happened to you over your life is inside your breath and so when you move towards just being with it 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 gives you access to things that you can rewire heal Mm -hmm. anchor in you know, like it, it is the most creative force that you have available and it is free and you are doing it every single day. It is the golden ticket to your own consciousness and to creating the life that you actually desire because it's all within your breath, every single part of it. And when mm-hmm. people start to realize that, you know, things are going to look very differently in life. And it's Mm. actually happening. You know, when I started, I'm trained in rebirthing breath work, which goes back into your birth patterns around your breath. And when I started doing that, you know, I didn't really hear much about breath work. When I actually told my family members, they all cracked up laughing because they were like, you're teaching people how to breathe. Like (laughs) they were just like, wow. Um, And I was like, no, 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 it's much deeper than that. But, um, and now like when you go out there, it's just like breathwork is everywhere. It's just like exploded. So it's just like, it's such exciting times. It's like, you know, it's people are moving away from the expert outside of themselves to the expert within. And that's Mm. a really exciting thing that's happening in society. Wow. And so Emma, where can people find you? Um, How can they get involved with the Reconnected? So you could just go to our Instagram, which is at the underscore reconnected. Um, And then my personal page is newearth.mama on Instagram. (laughs) I love it. Amazing. This has been everything I thought it would be and then way more. (laughs) I'm so grateful. (laughs) Oh, I always say I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time as well because so many of us are so time poor that thank you for gifting us with your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. You You have been listening to the Mother Days podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We love you, Daisies. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Bye. (laughs)